So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about editing your Gravity Forms entries. We're going to discuss some of the notifications that you might see both as an admin and as a, and as a person who submits a Gravity Form. And we're going to talk about the notification settings and how you can change the notifications that go out when somebody submits a form or a Gravity Form through one of your website pages or posts. So to get to the area where Gravity Forms lies on your website, you will be in your WordPress admin dashboard and on the left side of the screen you will see the forms menu. Just clicking on the forms menu takes you to the overall Gravity Forms area. And you'll see here we have two forms, one for people to send in prayer requests for this particular form. Another one is a sample event form template. So each one of these forms, when you hover over them, gives you information. For example, we can edit the form, we can check the settings of the form, and then hovering over settings shows you things for form settings, confirmation settings, and notification settings. We could view the entries for this form. We can preview the form, duplicate it, and edit it as a different form, and then, of course, delete the form. You'll see here the number of views, the number of entries on this form. So if you wanted to look at the entries for your form, you have two ways to do it. You can hover over the form itself and click entries, or you can click on the entries number here. Actually, I said two, there's really three. You could come back into the menu bar and look at entries here as well. So we wanna look at this prayer request form. So we'll come here and we'll click entries. And this shows us, uh, this was a simple test here, uh, a few different entries. This shows us the different entries. Now. Uh, you have columns here, the first name, last name, the email, and then the actual request for this prayer request form. And these are the fields we chose to display. Now you can also see more information about this form by clicking here under view when you hover over that actual name or this, this submission. And it'll take you to the page for the individual form. And it lists in table format here the entries that go along with this form. Now as an administrator, you can make a note directly on this form here. And then you can add that note and that will be added to the entry itself. You can also email that note. So the people who submitted the form here or leave notes on the form, their emails will get added to this drop down box. So if I wanted to add a note and then email that note to the person who submitted this, I could do that. For example, if I wanted to send a note directly from WordPress to the person who submitted the form, we could do that right here. You have some other identifying information on the side here in terms of uh, information for this particular form entry, including the ID, number of the entry, when it was submitted, the date and time, and the user's IP address. You also have the URL on which this form appeared, so you could tell which page this form was submitted from. Now, each form is submitted with certain admin notifications. Whoever the administrator of the website is will have a notification sent to them that a form has been submitted if they chose to set up that kind of a notification. If you wanted to resend a notification to the admins, you would click on this button and resend the notification. If you wanted to override the default person or email to which that notification should go, you could put that email address right here and then resend notifications. You can also choose whether or not to include notes if you wanted to print this. For example, you could click this button and print out this information which you could use and uh, take that information with you if you were call list or on the road or something. You can also export all of your entries. So if we click on this button again, it's gonna go back and show us all the entries for this particular form. If you wanted to, you could export all of these entries by going to the import export field. Now, up here in form settings, you will see three different settings types. You'll see the form settings, the confirmations, and the notifications, and we'll go through each one one by one. So if you click on form settings, You'll notice, again, the same three things here, form settings, confirmation settings, notifications. And what the form settings are, are the basic settings for each form that you put, that you create. So you'll see here just the title of the form and then a description. And these, this title and description can be used or it can be left out when you embed a form on your website. The layout, for example, we're gonna pull up this form. And we'll show you on the front page of this website. This form is included in a widget. So you'll see here prayer request, name, first name, last name, email, and then the prayer request with the submit button. You'll notice that the title of each field is above the field input and the description is down below. 
there's a red star next to any required field. So you'll see here label placement is top aligned. That means you want your label to be on the top of the input. You could also change this to left or right. Obviously doing left or right makes your form a little bit wider. And the description placement is below the inputs. And you click on these little comment boxes to get some help and suggestions about what those things mean. Your form button could be text or an image. So in this case, again, we're using the word submit, and that shows up as the submit button. You could use any text in that area. You can also use the custom image if you designed one. And then you can restrict these forms. So you could limit the number of entries. So say you only wanted to take a form from the first 20 people who filled it out. You could limit the form entry to 20, after which the form will not accept any further entries. You could schedule the form to be, av be available only during daytime hours or uh, for a certain period of time, like a certain period of weeks or months. And then you could also require the user to be logged in to submit that form. So that in that way, you can do a user-only form, things like support, things like that. Now, if you do make any changes, make sure you click on Update Form Settings. Now, confirmations are uh, uh, information that gets sent out either to um, uh, when somebody confirms their submission of the form, they will see a confirmation. So you'll see here we're using a default confirmation, which is just text, and it says, thank you for submitting a prayer request. Our assistant pastor will contact you shortly. Now you can edit that, and you can edit the type of information. So for example, you have three types, text, page, and redirect. Text is just going to show a simple text message when that form is submitted. For example, I'll show you how that works now. filling out the form with my name, email, and a short request. And we'll click Submit. And you'll notice that it reloads. So you can also have a page confirmation where I you can select a page that this will take you to upon submission of that form. So rather than reloading, you could send them off to a specific page. So after they filled out a form, you might take them to a page where they can sign up for your email or a page where they can get more information about that thing they just submitted or another way to contact you. You could also use, and these are pages within your WordPress system. So you'll notice you click this down select box and it lists all your pages. You could also click redirect and that will allow you to use a different URL, a URL outside or inside your system. It's any URL you could put that there. Any web address will work. If you're uh, corresponding with a third party application or an API, you can pass the field data from your form into an API. And this is used for integrating with third party applications. We'll leave this on text and we won't save anything there and we will click on notifications. Now under notifications, uh, notifications are the way uh, the system administrator is notified that a form has been submitted and also the person who had submitted the form. So for example, you'll see here right now we have just admin notifications selected. So this means if we click on this that whenever someone submits a form, the admin will be notified. And here you'll see the name of the notification, this is the admin notification, and it will be sent via email along with this information and all the fields will be attached and they have the ability to add that information here. You could put different information that's gonna go with that notification and that gets sent out directly to the email address listed. Now we're gonna show you how to add a new notification. For example, if you want to send a notification via email to the person who just submitted the form. You go back to notifications, click add new, and then you'll have a few choices here. So we'll just name this the submitter notification, which is going to notify the person who submitted. And you'll notice here we have a few different options, sending to. So this is going to send to. Now we can't enter an email address because we don't know who the submitters is, but we'll select a field. And we're going to select email. Now email was a field from the form. So email asked them to submit their email. So we're gonna click the email field and that's going to send an email to 
the address that the person submitted. And we're going to say this is from and we're going to leave the admin email address as to where this submission or this notification is coming from. You have other choices here. You can click the drop down and pick other choices that could be inserted there. We'll leave that. We're also going to click copy this and put that there. You have other options here again. If the person decides to reply to this, that where it will go. You can also leave this blank and it will be replied to wherever that email was sent as well. You can use this if you want to have a different reply uh, address other than where that address was sent from. And we'll just put a subject in the email and this is where the actual email goes. And you'll see here, we can come here and click on this information. Thank you for submitting a prayer request. We'll be in touch shortly. And then we can save that notification. So anytime somebody submits a prayer request, they will now be emailed with this information. So that covers the different types of settings that we have, form settings, confirmations, and notifications inside the Gravity Forms editor. If you have any questions, leave a comment or a message on this video or look in the video description to link over to the post that also explains the Gravity Forms entries and notification system.